So shabby chic just happens to be a new favourite of mine. I seem to be shabby chic painting everything in the house that doesn't seem to be bolted down. Um, photo frames are no exception. I got these frames here from the cheap shop. I got this one from Overflow and it cost me about three dollars I think. Um, it was black and I ended up wanting it white. Uh, this one here I think I think it worked out to be about a dollar. Um, now it looks like it's worth about 80 cents. Um, unless that's actually the look that you're going for. In which case I think it might be worth about two dollars now. <laughs> um, so it's really easy. You can do it on all sorts of different um, different s surfaces like wood. I think I've done a couple on plastic frames and also some on resin frames. I don't know how really resin is different to plastic but it all works it all works out the same if you can paint it you can shabby chic it um, I'm going to show on a little piece of wood how to how I do it um, I got the idea from Better Homes and Gardens they did an entire table setting um, which is not something I've gone as far as doing yet but um, I'm using um, Jo Sonia's paint, so just using um, carbon black and titanium white. I really like Jo Sonia paints. They're nice and nice and thick, but they they cover really well. But they don't leave it very lumpy, if you know what I mean. I, with some paints, they the um, you can see brush strokes, whereas with Jo Sonia's paints, it seems to be pretty, almost like it self levels. So paint, paint your frame or anything you're going to shabby chic in your base colour first. And it doesn't need to be a thick, it doesn't need to be a thick coat. I'm not afraid to get my fingers dirty. I've been walking around with black and white fingers for weeks. Then allow that to dry fully. Okay, once your project, your surface, has fully dried, um, we're going to rub a bit of candle wax over the areas that you want to come through. So if you look at this, for example, all of these little raised areas are where I've rubbed the candle and the, the top paint, the white paint, won't stick to those parts. So I'm just using a, a tea light candle that's past its use by date, it's burnt down a bit too far and um, I'm just rubbing it over the raised, the, the raised edges so if you're using a frame that's decorative you can sort of just judge it and, um, and, and rub it over those nice swirls and ridges. I'm also going to rub it a little bit down on these flat areas. And then it's ready to paint. I don't worry when these chunks of candle wax stick in other areas because I actually like the look when you get some random blotches of, of black showing through. So I'm going to use white paint and it's going to take a number of coats. I usually take about three coats using the Jo Sonia's paints to get the black to cover over completely. Suppose we're asking a lot of the white to cover a black, a black paint. But you can just keep building the layers up. It doesn't seem to really matter um, how thick the paint is. When you run some sandpaper over it once it's dry, the um, the black will still shine through, show through, um, because of that candle wax. So I'm going to do a few coats on this, um, allowing it to dry each time between between coats. Don't make the mistake of using a heat gun to dry it because that will melt the wax and the wax will come through the paint and it will be ruined basically. You might want to have to start again if you, if you do do that. Um, I have used a, um, a hair dryer just on the cool setting and I've held it really far away so it doesn't actually get hot and that seems to work fine too. I've given my piece of wood about three coats of white paint now and I'm ready to sand it back to reveal the black. 
I have a bit of um, 180 grit sandpaper which is pretty fine so the higher the number the finer the sandpaper is um, but I also use 120 occasionally which is a little bit more rough but it still seems to do fine so I'm just going to very gently run the sandpaper over the areas where I rubbed the candle earlier and that is going to expose the black I also like to sand down a little bit of um, this black and take it back to wood if I'm using wood. Um, it seems to, to make it look even just a little bit more rustic when, when some wood shines through. And then lastly, I just rub it very gently, very, very lightly over the entire surface and that takes off any of these little lumps of wax. And there we go, that's my shabby chic look.